there's tremendous gender inequality in every sector of society, we know. Uh, and a lot of it is gonna take a very long time to change. But the one area of gross gender inequality that can change overnight is on screen. And the Oscar goes to Gina, Gina Davis, Davis, the accidental tourist. In 1989, Gina Davis took home the Best Supporting Actress Oscar for her role in The Accidental Tourist. Thank you. Wow, I, I sort of can't believe I have to go first. Um, I, I'm very thrilled. Winning the Oscar, at least for me, was a sort of fabulous validation. It was quite early in my career, and it was, it was wonderful. It makes you feel incredible and appreciated. And I also interestingly felt like, well, I got that out of the way. <laughs> like, I don't have to ever worry about that again. 30 years later, in 2019, the Academy honored Davis once again, this time with the Gene Hersholt Humanitarian Award. If you look at the occupations of characters in film, 81% of the characters with jobs are male. And the number of women in top professions are profoundly underrepresented. It was an incredible honor, uh, and, it, but it was, and it was completely different, um, you know, because one was for acting, and that's what you typically think uh, an Oscar is about, but um, that I would ever get, uh, you know, a special Oscar for humanitarian efforts is not something that I planned. And it was kind of fun to know that you were gonna get it. <laughs> um, and really have the chance to write your acceptance speech, and so uh, it, was, it was wonderful. Do we really want to stand by the idea that it's fine for female characters to be one-dimensional, narrowly stereotyped, hypersexualized, or simply not there at all. The award recognized Davis and her nearly two decades of humanitarian work. Back in 2004, the actor founded the Gina Davis Institute, the only organization working alongside the entertainment industry to help foster and create on-screen gender balance, primarily within children's programming. When I started, it was just that I was bothered by the idea that we were showing kids a very imbalanced world, and I saw that there were so far fewer female characters than male characters. The worldview that we are reflecting to children is very, very imbalanced. Uh, for every one female character, there are three male characters. I didn't intend to make it my life's mission, but it has become that now, 15 years later. We, uh, you know, we've done the most research ever done on gender depictions in kids' TV and kids' movies covering over a 25-year span. The ratio of male to female characters over the whole 20-year period that we studied did not improve at all. The most interesting thing I discovered was that uh, children's on-screen representations is absolutely the lowest hanging fruit when you're talking about gender inequality, the easiest thing to fix, because they had no idea they were doing it. The people who make kids entertainment do it because they care about kids and they want to do right by kids. And uh, the data tells them everything. The, you know, the data really shows them what they were doing, which they didn't really realize. I mean, we were still making constantly Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, and uh, uh, with the data, they were able to see where, where they needed to boost the female population. We're saying that women are less important to our society than men, that girls are less important than boys, that women and girls don't take up half the space in the world. People were not aware. People thought that the problem of gender inequality in kids' entertainment had been fixed. And they weren't looking at the worlds that were being created that were often nearly bereft of female presence. And, uh, and the data really pointed that out to them. And from the very first meeting we took until one we had last week, the reaction is always, what? I, I can't believe that. What are we doing? Why are we doing that? The reaction that we've gotten is really meaningful uh, because people are, are very grateful for the information. And uh, I, I didn't know when we started how they were gonna react to coming in and saying, you know, we could do better. Everywhere we go, they say, please come back. All the major studios we've been to, you know, a dozen times at least, and uh, they say, do more research, bring it to us, we wanna see it. The goal is to have the fictitious worlds that are created uh, reflect the real world, which is half female and incredibly diverse. Uh, and and it, so it's not like some weird, uh, you know, outrageous, <laughs> concept uh, to, to make it 
you know, so that kids can see people like them on the screen. Beautiful, so elegant. Gorgeous. <laughs> when I first started out uh, was a time when every year at the Oscars, Meryl Streep and Jessica Lange and Glenn Close and Sally Field were nominated for these incredible movies starring them and, uh, and getting awards. And, and I thought, you know, I'd heard the concept that, well, women over 40 don't work. Uh, but I thought, they're changing everything. This is, you know, this is how it's gonna be and I won't have to worry about anything. That didn't turn out to be uh, true. Didn't really change anything. But I was getting some really good parts, interesting parts. You be sweet to him, especially your wife. <laughs> My husband wasn't sweet to me. Look how I turned out. When Thumb and Louise came out and we saw the reaction to that movie, it was mind-blowing how, what a nerve it struck. And all the press said, this changes everything. Now we're going to see so many movies with women and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, hot dog, you know, I'm going to be in a movie that changes everything. And the very next movie was Leah Their Own. They said the same thing, you know, a giant hit. Uh, with women playing sports, we're going to see so many more female sports movies. And none of that happened. <laughs> the numbers have never moved. Um, and in fact, uh, the ratio of male to female characters on screen uh, in films has been exactly the same since 1946. But now in family rated films, which is GPG and PG-13, we have reached parity in the lead characters. So it's very exciting. Davis knows better than most just how big an impact one single character can have. We don't have enough real life role models for women to see, let's say a woman president, uh, female CEOs. But if we see fictitious characters doing it, it has an enormous impact. Uh, for example, uh, Fox asked us to study the impact, if any, of the Dana Scully character from X-Files. I saw the FBI as a place where I could distinguish myself. She had an enormous impact. 63% of women working currently in STEM cite Dana Scully as their specific inspiration. So, and it's called the Scully effect. And so, if you, you can imagine one character having that kind of impact. The answers are there. You just have to know where to look. A few years ago, my archery coach called and told me that suddenly in 2012, he noticed he was looking at graphs of participation in archery, and girls was always way at the bottom. And suddenly the line shot straight up and became the most populated category of men, women, boys, and girls. That was the year Hunger Games came out. Girls left the theater and bought a bow. It was absolutely instant. And, you know, that's a, you know, kind of, uh, funny example, but, uh, but it's, that's the kind of impact that images can have. And there's no question, the image of Dottie Henson hitting a home run had a pretty big impact as well. When it first came out, I had lots of girls and young women saying that they play sports because of the movie. And now, 28 uh, years later, I think, uh, I have the same number of girls and young women say I play sports because of that movie. BFF is an exciting, one-of-a-kind initiative that will champion women and diversity in all aspects of film. In 2015, Gina co-founded the Bentonville Film Festival to help celebrate and amplify the underrepresented voices of diverse storytellers. Coming up this summer is going to be the sixth uh, Bentonville Film Festival, and it's really based off the same kinds of theories that I've had from the Institute. If we can just highlight and use research and bring to people's attention the areas that were lacking female representation and people of color and, and uh, diversity, uh, it, can make, it can make change. So we really focus on films that are directed by women or people of color, uh, where the star is diverse or uh, also the, if the crew is gender balanced, which is rare, but some people do that. So you have to qualify with certain categories to be in the festival. If any of my kids decide they want to be in the business, they had better <laughs> pay attention to all of this. And, and they, they really do. They're so tuned into this. In fact, uh, uh, from when they were little, I've always watched movies and TV with them. And uh, 
and I would often lean over to say, you know, there's only boys in that scene. Why do you think that is? And and uh, and now if we're watching a movie, I just start to lean over. They say, I know, Mom. There's not enough not enough girls in that scene. <laughs> so they're very aware. My simplest advice to creators is, whatever you're already going to make, you probably have the script already. Before you cast it and before you shoot it, just go through it and see if there's any characters that can become female or uh, you know any any type of diversity and change the first name and uh, that's a fabulous way to make it gender balanced. Yeah, I think I think people are definitely doing that. That's one of the reasons we're having so many more female characters now.